Good afternoon, folks. How's it going? All right, so um, this is uh, my Merino, my well, my Pelican Bass Raider, I call the Merino, or El Merino. And uh, if you've watched my other videos, you'll know that I use this for a variety of things, not so much pond fishing. I have used it for that and got some great fish, but um, I use it a lot in the river uh, and for exploring and whatnot, and so it gets banged up a bit. Now, a lot of this uh, big wear, like the big blue spots, are not me. That was there before. Still recording? I pressed the button. All right. Uh, and that was there before, and I got it. Um, but that's obviously a pretty thin spot now, right? And uh, But what is me is some of these really big gouges. Um, you know, like this. See here? And... Some of this might be from the river and some of it might be from portaging. I built a uh, trailer for it, which is also a rack. We'll do a video on that another time. It's, uh, uh, it works pretty well, but uh, and it gets the boat a little higher um, than it was before, actually, with my second version, which was just the plank that everybody else uses. I had some trouble keeping my axles from breaking off the plank. Like, the axles wouldn't break, but they would break off the plank, so... I thought I could make metal end caps, and then uh, I realized that um, I wanted a rack for this thing to get a little bit more cargo capacity. And uh, then I realized my rack could also be the uh, dolly. So, anyways. But nonetheless, while you're dragging it through, like the other day, I had to portage it almost a kilometer through some fairly thick stuff. And I was cutting uh, lots of stuff out of my way and then dragging it over trees and whatnot. So you can get all kinds of stuff. Um, where I can get all kinds of stuff. Like this gouge here is huge, in my opinion. That might even be through the hall. I'm not sure. But anyways, uh, you can get all kinds of little uh, stuff going on. And so I want to add protection. And um, in Canada, particularly in Canmore, some of the products are a little harder to get. Not really too big on ordering online. Like this here, that's huge. And... Um, Anyways, the first thing I wanted to do was add some protection for the rear at the drag marks. My God. Uh, and I had found a... Uh, hexagonal? Anyways, a garbage can. Octagon or a hexagon? It's got six sides, not five or eight. Anyways. Uh, I found this uh, garbage can and I thought that it would... Um, be the right kind of rubber or well plastic i mean it seems to be but i think what's going on because i can't make it stick to the other material that i use for the boat i haven't tried to make it stick to the boat but what i think might be going on is that uh it's a super high highly recycled product like i think it comes from the recycling company and so i don't think it wants to adhere to anything and i mean the only way i could get it to stick was literally have it molten like burning on fire, dripping onto the other one. I did two runs of that, and then, uh, like, I dripped one onto one, and then I dripped the other onto the other, or whatever. And only one of them stuck, stuck kind of. It actually stuck fairly well, but it didn't look right. Like, it looked like it was more a blend of different plastics that were fused together than uh, a weld, per se. So I don't know what's going on. It's too bad, because just this one piece if i could have uh heated it up and formed it i mean you can see how well that would work right um so if i could have heated that up and formed it um i would have been super happy to do that and that provides me enough protection just from uh from um <clears throat> being in the water and dragging it around a little bit uh so what a lot of people do is uh they run these plastic strips there's a couple different kinds you can get. Oops, where's my hand and my smoke? Anyway, there's a couple different kinds you can get, but they run these plastic strips and they glue them down with like 3M and whatnot. But some of my gouges, as you can see on the other side, are like way above that line. So I would, I need something that's going to wrap over the sides. Um, I'm thinking I might go with black um, buckets. If I can get a bunch of black buckets, if I can cut them up into... I don't know, eights or something like that, that should be able to contour, and I can weld those buckets together and all that. It should look pretty seamless. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I was I was gonna, going to uh, use Flex Seal, 
and I got a couple cans of that and just testing it. Um, I don't think it's going to work as well as I hope. It seems like it'll provide direct uh, impact protection pretty well, but abrasion will just like rip it right off. So, um, and I don't mean like rip off, rip it off in patches, like it rips off strips and whatnot. It's like uh, uh, as you would with like um, rubber. What am I thinking of here? Uh, when we were kids, there was some rubber thing that used to. Anyways, I don't, I don't remember what some some kind of a toy when you would erase it, it would come off in long strips of rubber. But uh, and the the flex seal seems to do that. It's not like it comes off in one big patch. It, it just kind of like strips off and strips off. So uh, it, I don't think it would offer all that much protection. I don't think it's worth adding to the haul at this point which is why I put the boat upside down, because I was going to do that. Now, what I am going to do, what I've been reading, uh, I've been doing a whole bunch of research on the chemistry and whatnot, and it seems like glue sticks are... Uh, oh, wow, look at that one. seems like glue sticks are, uh, are a uh, good way to go with this. Uh, but you want higher-end glue sticks, and if possible, you want ones that are specifically made for polyethylene. Uh, there's a couple brands out there that kind of cater to that market. Um, these boats are not polyethylene. I mean, they are a polyethylene, but they're a, uh, high molecular weight polyethylene. Not an ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, which is again, slightly different. The ultra high molecular weight, um, apparently is, a, well, ultra difficult to bond, but, uh, and it won't bond to, uh, the lower weight, uh, uh, polyeth, uh, Oh my god, anyways, you know what I'm talking about. So, this boat is a, uh, a, uh, sorry, I want to, ah, shit, I wanted to kill that fly before it makes babies. It's too late. Uh, polyethylene, this boat's a, uh, high weight polyethylene. And, uh, there's not a lot out there to cater to that market, for whatever the reason is. Um... But uh, using the HDPE stuff works, but I'm really concerned about using it on the actual bottom where there's going to be a lot of flexing, right? Like, because as the boat's going over stuff, it's flexing and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, I did do these huge, these, well, huge, these fairly large patches in my transom. Uh, there's more on that in my plastic welding video. And that's using that material that I have uh, from the water bottles. So that seems to be holding, but that's not supposed to flex so much, right? But I mean, these just, you can tell just by pushing on it, it's kind of really meant to flex. Um, so I'm, I'm a little bit uh, hesitant to weld any poly or HDPE into this um, bottom part. Let me know what you think. Um, I'm kind of at a loss. I've been reading for a few weeks now, and uh, there aren't necessarily a lot of options. Um, for me, uh, having limited access to product, right? Like, ideally, I think that there should be a company out there that makes a uh, Kevlar sheet that's uh, mostly preformed or might be uh, might be soft or something like that. I'm not even sure how you do it, but a, a Kevlar sheet and... Uh, you know, that comes up to about here or so that we could put onto these. Um, because I know that I'm not alone in this problem. There are people who, uh, just from dragging their boats around, right? Like just going on and off ramps. So I'll, uh, try and upload this video and share it out to get some ideas. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to clean this up and start filling some of these in, uh, some of these deeper gouges in with the, uh, hot glue. I'm going to try Gorilla Glue. It's not necessarily the best one to use. It's a multi-use glue. It's a multi-temp glue. Um, I don't think that's really the best way to go. Yeah, as they say, you know, like, good at everything, great at nothing kind of thing. So, but that's what I have. Um, and I had bought it thinking that it was the best glue sticks you could get, blah, blah, blah. I fall into the product hype sometimes. I'll try it. I'll try something out anyways. And then I'll get left over with a bunch of shit that's useless sometimes. But you gotta try or you don't find out. Um, I mean, I thought even maybe what I could do is spot weld bits and pieces in. Because it's not like a, if a little bit of water gets in the hull, it's not that crazy uh, of a deal. 
And at some point or another, I could split the hull and put some patches wherever there might be issues. So I did think about like spot welding pieces in. I also thought about using rivets. Um, but to me, the rivets are a big no-no because uh, it just it just doesn't seem right. I don't know. Anyways. Okay. Um, I'm going to cut this short. It'll take me two days to upload. Uh, again, please let me, let me know what you think. Hit me up in the comments. Um, I personally think, like, after after failing to get this stuff to adhere to anything but itself, um, I came across some other thoughts, or I had some other thoughts, I should say. And one of those was that it might actually be smarter for me to use a thinner material. So that way, when it goes molten, it will cool off, like, relatively quickly um, and not have any chance of deforming things or have less chance of it anyways. Like... If I heat that thing up to the point where it'll actually like fill in gaps and stuff, uh, it'll it'll melt the boat. I think. Um, I was actually thinking about like using sand, like go park the boat in sand, get a good imprint, and then melt that into the sand. Kind of go from there and then uh, work it. But uh, at this point, I think that really the way to go on something like this is use a thinner material. If you split a bucket open and and like just use a whole bucket, I guess you'd get about that much plastic usable, right? Somewhere around there. So that'd be like one bucket, two bucket, three bucket, four bucket, five bucket. So 10 buckets um, might do it. Um, you need a lot of welding. <laughs> but it's worth it. This boat is a fucking champ. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I'm not even worried too much about the extra weight, but the... Uh, Durability is just, you know, like, it, it needs a little bit more. Um, I've even thought about actually trying to find an extra one of these boats that's smashed somehow, or, I don't know, rotted out, and then getting the uh, hull, cutting the hull, and then kind of making it uh, fit over, over this hull. Um, but that would be difficult and likely expensive, so... Yeah, let me know what you think. Beautiful day out here in the Rockies, but I am confused. So I'll stop this now and thanks for watching.